thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. Welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're a regular here, this is probably gonna bore you, but if you're here for this car, then this is probably gonna be interesting. This car sucks. Everything about working on these things sucks, but you can do this in your garage, and I'm gonna try to help you walk through it and do the basics on it because it seems like there is no good videos on such a simple, complicated <laughs> task. Um, all right, let's dive right in. Let's not waste time. So we are working on this one is going to be, I think this is a 15. Where was the door sticker? If you're wondering where your year's at, it's gonna be right there in your sticker and your door jam. This is a 15 Mercedes Benz 550 GL. But it's gonna be pretty common, a lot of stuff. I bought this one totaled from a salvage auction, completely wrecked and put it back together. There's a few videos on this car on the channel. So when you pop the hood, we're going after a cool pack, as you've seen from the description fix this light wigs all out in low settings um this is a harbor freight light if anybody's wondering you get these at harbor freight if you're working on this and you're not a car guy and you're trying to do it yourself first step is we've got to remove these i've already popped them off they just pop off uh yours are probably going to break my car was totaled and i replaced these brand new off ebay i will uh try to put part number on the screen or the link in the description in case yours uh breaks uh but these are brand new off ebay they weren't expensive at all you can get them for the left and right so we're gonna pop that off and then we're gonna pop this off. It's literally just pops off. It's got some tabs like that on the bottom. Chunk that to the side. This is gonna pop off. I've already popped it loose because I actually stopped and said, I'm gonna film this video to help y'all guys out. Uh, same thing, it's got clips. It just pops up. The front, um, you can pretty much pull up, pull up on this. Then the back might be a little bit more tricky. So I've got less like old school trim pry tool. Uh, you can use a pry bar, anything. Just get underneath the edge, pop it up. Pretty much like that. Harper's out here helping me this morning. What'd you find, Harper? Your tape. Yeah. All right, next step is we are going to get this guy out of our way to make it more simple. So we have got some clamps right here that we have to undo. All right, so you're going to next, which I just pulled it up. Basically, this kind of just pulls up. So you're going to pull this box up. Now you're going to have two clamps here. I went ahead and loosened these. And then on this piece right here, you're gonna have a metal band. I have a hose clamp. Your metal band is gonna look like that right there. That's what yours is gonna look like, okay? You need to take that looking band right there that is right here. I've already had this off one time, so that's why mine's already done. Uh, yours is gonna look like that, again, unless it's been messed with. You need to take that metal band and destroy that metal band, get that metal band off. So what I use to get it off is basically, a set of side cutters wire cutters so something bigger than this but basically like some side cutters get to that band somehow and just get that band cut off of there uh you can normally cut that little nipple right there that's sticking off and loosen it up uh go ahead to the part store and you're going to get you some kind of hose clamp that fits that um, and you're going to replace this with a hose clamp so you can put this back together so that it doesn't require that special uh, band. So as you can see, I've already done my, my try to be deta more detailed in this video than entertaining to help people out. Mm. So you might have to get I'm checking my You're sticking a flashlight in mommy's car? Yeah. All right, so now we've got these two clamps undone, loosened. They just simply turn with a flathead screwdriver. We've got this unplugged. This right here just pushes on there. So we've got that unplugged. And then you've got this little thing right here, which is going to have some push tabs on it. All right, so that undone it comes undone like that. So you've got these little pieces on each side that are like textured, okay? That squeezes. You have to kind of squeeze that and pull up on it. That's gonna relieve it. You're again, you're squeezing where these textures are on each side and then pulling up on the whole ordeal, pulling it off. Now, this thing, you should be able to separate it right here.
point. You can just pull that completely out of your way if you want to. You're all done, Harper. And then you can pull this up. Now this has a plug on the back side right here. Okay, so it's got a, a plug back here. I'm not messing with mine on this one. I'm not gonna unplug it or anything like that. As you can see, I can rotate this box out of the way and just let it sit there uh, instead of breaking a plug. All right, so we've got this foam here that we need to take off. All this is is literally just a block of foam, okay? It's not, you're not gonna hurt nothing. Okay, so get that out of your way. And now here is all of our um, cool packs and everything. I go ahead and tell you, if you're trying to do the spark plugs on this, you have to order a special spark plug tool for this vehicle off of Amazon. Uh, some of these clips will break on you. Um, when you put them back together, I'll show you a zip tie trick, hold them together. Two of mine are already done from last time I was in here. See a zip tie there, a zip tie back there on that one. Zip tie, zip tie, okay? I'll show you how to do that. And when I took this apart, I literally tried to be as careful as I could not to break it and it still broke. Um, the best way to determine if you have a cold pack issue, because these cold packs are not cheap, if you get a code, code for cold pack, which is what I had, I had this cylinder. I'm not gonna say the cylinder number or anything because I don't wanna mislead anybody and I can't remember 100% without looking it up. Um, I had this cylinder misfire. So what I did was I unhooked uh, this. I come in here and got this unhooked and I moved it to this one, and then I moved this cold pack to this one, and then you go back to driving your car. If your code now pops up for this cylinder, for the cylinder that you moved your cold pack to, even if it's over here and you move it somewhere else, okay, we're working on this side, then that tells you that your cold pack is the issue because it moved. If your code comes back on the same exact cylinder and you moved your cold pack to a different cylinder, then you're going to have another issue such as spark plugs or an injector or wire and harness or something like that. But if the code moves with the coal pack, then you have a coal pack issue. And that is what happened uh, to us. All right. So for the coal pack, we got a Bosch coal pack. I'm all for cheap eBay parts. Like I'm a big eBay cheap parts fan on this channel, but I don't want to do this job twice. There's some things in life that's just annoying that you don't want to chance doing twice. So I went with a Bosch unit. Um, instead of you know a knockoff unit there's nicer units you can go to your local dealer and get it but i wanted to make sure i got bosch i got it off of ebay i just used actually got actual bosch one off ebay because it's way cheaper off ebay than it is from advance um so here's some numbers on the front of it i believe this is gonna be your part number let's get this thing opened up i haven't even opened it up let's see if there's any It is a legit Bosch one. You can see right here on it. Okay, so there's some more numbers right there on it. If you need to search eBay, search them for these part numbers. You know, such as this 20221208, and that probably will trigger it. If not, maybe start searching it for these other part numbers right here. You know, try one of them. I think that was the one that was on the box right there. That's 0 0221604067. Bosch and that should pull it up. So this is what your coal pack looks like. Um, it's funky. It's in there all crooked um, and it's a complete utter pain in the freaking tail. So let's get to the fun part of getting this out. All right. So my code on my little handheld scanner, I have just a little cheap one was for coal F. Okay. Now my big scanner, it told me cylinder six. Originally we were cylinder seven, which is going to be right here but then i moved it up here to this one which is cylinder six this is gonna be five so five six seven eight from all the research i have done you can verify that if you want um but when i moved it from seven to here to six that was it if you're going to move your cold packs always move the bad one closest to you or in the easiest spot to get to that way you've already done half the hard work. So I would never ever move a, coal, a bad coal pack. Like if it was misfiring here, I would never put it on the back because then it's harder to change back there in the tight spot. So once you get that sucker out, go ahead and move it to the easiest location there is. 
And then that way, if you have to change it again, you, you've already done half the hard work versus making it hard on you. And you don't, hopefully, you fix the hard one because you moved the good one to it. And hopefully, you don't ever have that uh, issue again. Um, so, my cheap scanner, Advanced Auto Parts, Napa Rallies. The places like that, the little handheld scanner, it said code F or cylinder F. So, that's going to be uh, ABCs off of numbers. So, A, B, C, D, E, F. So, cylinder six. That's going to be the one. Uh, that's the way that scanner reads. Um, so we're going to get this undone. Now, since I already put a zip tie on mine, we're going to have to cut the zip tie. I don't think I want to try to attempt to take another one of these apart just to show you, sadly. But let's see here. Nope, that one was unclipped. Okay, so if I can help somebody, I will. Let's see. Get you a flat screwdriver, probably. And then what we're going to do is you're going to have that little clip's going to go forward like that. And then you should be able to uh, squeeze this thing to get it to release. Um, it's a little difficult right now. I really don't want to undo it, y'all. Um, I don't want to break mine. So <laughs> these are pain in the butt. As you can see, the two I did right there ended up going back together with zip ties. So you just kind of fight with this thing, squeeze it like that to get it undone, or come in here on this side if you can't get yours undone. And sometimes you can take a flathead in here and wiggle it and get the uh, the tabs. Oops, see, it's pushing the gray tab out. Okay, you can wiggle it like this, side to side. Okay, like this. Okay, and then sometimes that will help you, or wiggle it up and down will help relieve the clip from the back side. I don't want to mess with this. Um, Trust me, it's a pain in the butt, but you can try it. Uh, if you break it, like I said, there's not, you don't really have to worry because there is a zip tie trick. So let me get my zip tie. <laughs> I hate this car. Man, I hate this car. All right, well, let me take a break and get my pliers right, out. We got them back. I don't know how I got that lucky. A little bit of fishing down there and they fell out the bottom. Um, cut the zip tie with the camera off. Doing YouTube, help people. you help people out, but you make your life so much more complicated um, because you have to film everything you're doing. A lot of people don't realize that. Not only do I have to do what you're doing, but I have to film it all. So my little clip also broke, as you can see right here, but I saved it to put it back in there. So I'm going to set this to the side, okay? And then I'm going to pull my zip tie out, and I will show you all how we wrap that around uh, whenever we're done because the chances of you breaking yours are pretty high. Uh, what we're going to do next is now we're going to pull that connector off. Okay, so we're undone now. And now we have these two bolts to get undone. So these bolts are going to be a inverted star. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so basically an inverted uh, star socket. And it is an E8. Okay, so you can go buy these and uh a kit so you're gonna have that one bolt right there let's see here i'm definitely putting the camera down to do this i'm just trying to show y'all so you got that one right there and then you've got one on the back right there okay that's where that one's gonna be so each coal pack has two bolts okay i'm dropping everything this morning right there right there that's going to be your two bolts that's the only thing that holds this guy in and now my light's gone because my light has died so this is definitely not being a good uh happy fourth of july to me but hopefully i'm helping you so i ended up actually using a short extension with the combination of that and then with my ratchet and that was able to get me right here to where this cold pack comes out now you can't just simply grab the body of this thing and pull on it uh, let me show you out of the car so it's easier to see so you don't want to just simply grab the body right here and start yanking on it because you can actually rip this rubber boot off so this right here with my fingernails pushing all of this right here is rubber every bit of it okay uh, this turns into a hard tube right here so you don't want to pull on this rubber so this is hard plastic this is rubber from here into here and then this from here to here is a hard metal tube now this is the end that pushes in over your spark plug. So you wanna pull this up. Now they make a special tool that I also will try to put in the link um, or part number on the screen. 
that goes right here and prize it off. However, I don't have that special tool and you don't have to have that special tool. Uh, it's just gonna make your job a little bit harder. I don't even know how that special tool would work. It's like a bent wrench. Uh, so I don't know how you would exactly get it down in there for any leverage, but we are going to use a Harbor Freight tool. Either one of these, I'll show you what you're gonna do. So go to Harbor Freight. I think this kit's like 10 bucks. So these really big pick, really big picks. And what you're gonna do is when this coal pack is in there, okay? So it's gonna be down in the motor like this, right? This is the top, this is down there. Is you're gonna come in here with this and you're going to hook it right here on this plastic tab, okay? So you're gonna get something around that plastic tab, whether it's your 90 degree pick or your hook. Um, you're gonna get that and then you're gonna take this and you're gonna pull it up and that's gonna pull this boot out. Now this can, when I first did this, this can be extremely, extremely difficult uh, part of the process to do on uh, some of them if they are extremely stuck. Uh, but me, I just did it with brute force and just pulled that up, but you have got to hook onto this plastic tube. So I'm gonna throw you on the stand uh, just to show you. Mine might come out easy because I think I did put dielectric grease on it, hopefully lube it up, uh, but we will see. I'm gonna try to put you right here just so you can, you're not really exactly able to see what I'm doing, but at least you can see uh, the real life struggle because it's not, some of these situations, it's just not easy. You gotta first off find where that little tab's at, get everything at an angle. So the hook one, let's try the 90. This is the worst part of the whole job, is getting these coal packs to come undone. So there you go. That's the old one out. So let's take it over here. Let's compare it. Let's see what this one is. Let's wipe this off. So this is going to be a Mercedes. So this may be the original. This car only has 100,000 miles. But here's the part number for the Mercedes unit, just in case you want to screenshot this right here and search for the actual Mercedes ones. Um, I think we searched the Mercedes part number. And that is how we found the Bosch one. So now what we're going to do just to be safe is we are going to take some dielectric grease. This is just going to help keep everything uh, lubed up and also make a good connection. This is dielectric grease. You can get this at your local parts store. And we're going to put some in the end of this. Put you back on the stand. We're just gonna take oh, something like that. And this is hopefully just gonna help this right here uh, not get stuck in there if we do have another issue. Because me, I'm always expecting another issue. These things normally don't go perfect for me. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little out the outside because I don't think anything touches this but I'm not 100% sure, and I want this thing greasy and oily if it has to come back out. All right, so now we're gonna put the new one back down in there. All right, after I get mine bolted in, I'm gonna take my hand on the tube of the cool pack, and I'm just gonna wiggle it, okay, just to help make sure that it pushes down in there. And it's not seized up on nothing. So what I'm doing is I'm reaching down in there and I'm grabbing this right here and I'm just wiggling it like this, just a little bit. And that's just gonna help make sure that it's not like, like this right here, uh, which you can't really push it up, but make sure it's not pushed up this way and make sure that it goes down in there to hopefully give us success. Uh, now we have to do our plug. Uh, so let me show you that. We're gonna grab zip tie, also Harbor Freight. While you're there, grab your zip ties if you don't already have them. If you're working on cars, you probably should have zip ties around. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty universal across the car world. 
zip ties. Okay, so the trick on these guys, okay, is through here, right here, you see my finger, okay? So there's nothing through there, meaning we can take our zip tie like this right here, okay, and we can go through there. See that? Okay. Now what we're going to do is when we go through there, we are going to, and I'm showing you this over here because people show you in the car and you can't really see what's going on. So we're going to go through our plug. Our imaginary plug is going to be plugged on there. And then we're going to come down here and you're going to attempt to go around your bolt and across the bottom like this. Okay. And then back up like that. Okay. Um, you may have to go on the front of this bolt right here. So it may go in and then it may go around behind the tube and then behind the bolt like this and then back up. But either way, you want to make sure you get a loop where it's not going to flip off. So sometimes people do the zip tie trick and then it falls off. So you want to make sure it's locked in there. Uh, let me put it on here and figure out what orientation that is. And then I'll show you on the bench real fast. All right, this is how I'm zip tying that. So I've got the screw in here just to demonstrate. So we have got it wrapped around. It's going to be through your clip. Okay, and I did put my little broken black plastic piece back in before I stuck the zip tie through it. It's going to be through the piece and then it's going to go around here between this bolt and this tube. And then it's going to wrap under and then come back up. What this is going to do is so that if this side right here slips over like that, it's still locked in between here. And then it being inside the clip is gonna hold it uh, right there. It can't be across top of the clip, it's gotta be through the clip. Don't put a ton of pressure on it, just make it secure. Um, and then wrap it under and around, and it should stay right there. If this side was to walk over that way, again, it couldn't get off of the cool pack because of the bolt and it can't go over to this side because it's too short. So it will stay locked in and not come apart on it. If you put it over here on this side, then it literally could just fall right off um, the cold pack. So that's how you do if you break a clip, pretty common. Um, I'm gonna put all this back together and uh, see if we fix this issue. This is also a good time to go ahead and change your air filters. They are located in this box. Um, I don't care about doing mine. I blew this one out whenever it was apart, uh, but if you want to do it, it's going to be screws right here in the freaking bottom. It's going to be a star screw, okay? A Torx. Uh, and then there's going to be ones on the back, I believe, right there. Uh, if you look around this box, you can see them. There's one right up there, and then another one on the front. And then that will unbolt the lid where the lid comes off to change your filter. When I had all this apart, I simply went ahead and took it apart and blew my filter out. Uh, instead of changing it to be cheap a little bit and then to put it back in I think you just got to get lined up on some pins Let's see what does it clip on so it's going to clip on that little mushroom shape right there that's what this tab is going to clip on it looks like. and the back the same thing so the back has that guy right there that same little clip and we're looking where we're filling for another thing back here there you go and it's back in place and then let's see here we've got this guy we have to make sure now you're going to put a normal hose clamp on from the parts store i do not remember the size so go get you a variety pack You'd have to have the special tool to actually put the legit clamp back on. It's not worth it. Okay, again, can't do that one-handed. I'm gonna push that back on. And then this guy, we'll just clip in like that. And then of course, you know how to put this on. Probably should do that before you snap all this in place. Get that back on, get that pushed back on. I would get this guy on the metal first if you're taking this all the way off before you clip this in place. So I took mine back apart. And then we're gonna get that back and then we'll take a flat head. I guess let me show you all that just in case somebody is struggling with this. So we get the bottom hooked in there and then take the flat head. Walk the top up like that. 
now let it all clip back in. You got that clipped on. Push your hose on. Push that hose back on. Make sure all this is set on there good and correct. Take your time because this is where your air comes in. And if not, you're gonna, it's gonna throw a code or a misfire or it's gonna do something funky because there's a sensor in there that's gonna read. I think it reads the air um, that's moving through here. And so if you're putting more air in the motor then that sensor can read, since your air is coming in here, going through here and into the motor turbos, um, you're gonna throw your, I believe it's gonna be your air fuel ratio off and you're gonna have codes. So make sure all of these lines are put back on there and they're actually on. All right, so all of that's back on. And for your duck, it just clips on. Just pushes on, pushes on this side. When you're taking this apart, you might have to get a flathead in there and work with it a little. And this goes back on. And this guy goes back on. It's got a little ball, a little uh, rubber right there and a little ball stud and it goes on. Now look around, make sure you didn't forget any bolts, and then you're good to go. The only thing I forgot, <laughs> trying to film is I forgot to put the rubber padding back on over the cold pad. That's technically not needed. It's just like a heat shield uh, piece of foam, but I guess I'm gonna go back in here and try to slip it back on. All right, so got it back in there. Uh, now what we're going to do is the final part of this process, which is find my scanner. It's outside. It's in the F-150. Along with all, look at all them pinout papers down there from electrical. It's always loads of fun around here. I got the race car out this morning, getting some sun. So if you want to check that out, stay to the channel subscribed or uh, stay watching because we do a lot with that. Let's go put this on here, clear our old clothes out and then crank this thing and see if it has a crazy misfire. If you missed something, your scan be down here. And if you miss something or that plug's not plugged in or it's not hooked up to the spark plug correct, it's gonna immediately misfire pretty bad. So as long as we don't have no immediate misfires, then we might be good. All right, so there's what our code was. We're gonna erase this thing. Back. I'm not used to using this little scanner. All right, now we're gonna crank this. Yeah, I gotta check the coolant, but we don't have any check engine light immediately. So let's go back to engine, read codes, the pending because if you don't have something hooked up it's going to be immediate so no codes pending so we uh not necessarily saying we have our problem fixed but we definitely do not have uh an issue like literally right this second something's not making connection if your plug's not plugged in the cool pack is not pushed all the way down on the spark plug engine's going to be misfiring it's immediately going to pretty much throw check engine light if you have a misfire normally it's going to start flashing um, it's not going to take long at all to get that check engine light if you don't have something hooked up. If it's completely just unplugged, it's going to be pretty quick. Um, but if uh, if that wasn't our issue, uh, 
then you might have to drive it a little, or if it wasn't your issue, you might have to drive the vehicle a little and then monitor it and see if your check engine light comes back on. Uh, you do not have to erase the check engine light after your work is done. It will turn itself off with a certain amount of key cycles uh, and cold starts. I don't know what them are, but all vehicles will, every single time you turn your key on, the vehicle basically runs certain tests. Kind of like when you go to a doctor and get a checkup, the car's computer does a checkup on the car every single time you turn the key on. So after so many of them, after it passes its test so many times that there is no misfire, then it will cut that check engine light off because it, it shows that it's fixed. So if you don't erase your code, your check engine light will not go away immediately. It's going to take so many key cycles or restarts. So you could drive it to work for a week. And if it's fixed, the the check engine light should turn itself off. I would say just about a week would definitely be plenty. Uh, I've seen some of these trucks we do on a dealership. We do salvage titles. And we have to have everyone inspected. Some of them we have to drive for a really good amount of time um, before they check off. Some of them are a pain in the butt. Um, so if you feel like it's taking too long for the check engine light to turn off, then maybe find somebody with a scanner or a code reader and have them just erase your codes out of there and then see if it comes back. Uh, hopefully this helped y'all. And if you're here to stay, I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thanks, y'all.